Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my uh, review for Ernest in the Army. This is my final Ernest film review, uh, well, because it's the final Ernest film, but just to jump into it here, I believe I've heard this film took four years to complete because of Jim Varney's health was declining uh, at this time, it was getting a lot worse, uh, which is really sad. Uh, I miss Jim Varney, I wish he was still around. I like Jim Varney, I'm a big fan of his, and even the weaker Ernest films I can still enjoy. Just to recap what I think what I think about this franchise, <clears throat> Dr. Otto and Real of the Gloom Beam, I'd give three stars. Good movie. Uh, I think it could have been great, but I don't think it quite makes it up to greatness. But uh, it is a good movie, I think, a really good movie. So I give it three stars. Uh, Ernest Goes to Camp, I think, is an all right movie. Nothing amazing, but an all right, uh, an all right little film. I'd give it two and a half. Uh, Ernest Saves Christmas, I love Ernest Saves Christmas. I would give it four stars out of four. I love that one. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what order they actually are in the films. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what order the films are in. But um, I don't know if, this, if, the, if the order I'm going to name them off here is exactly right because there's 10 of these movies and it gets a little confusing <laughs> a little confusing for me, keeping them in the right order. But uh, either way, uh, yeah, Anna Six Christmas would be, would be four stars. Um, let's see. Um, Ernest Goes to Jail would be an okay two stars. Um, Ernest Scared Stupid, uh, I believe I gave it, it two and a half and put it under a decent movie status. Yeah, it's a decent movie. A fun little Halloween, uh, treat movie. I like that one. Ernest Rides Again, uh, I believe I gave it four stars. Um, I really like Ernest Rides Again. Um, it's a really fun buddy movie that one is. Ernest Goes to School, uh, fuck Ernest Goes to School. I give Ernest Goes to School a barely scraping by low level two stars, just a passable film. Slam Dunk Ernest, I believe I gave it one star. It's a bad movie, but at the same time, it's entertaining. It's just a little bit worse than uh, Ernest Goes to School, but um, it's a bad movie, but it's it's slightly entertaining. It's still entertaining because of Jim Varney, so it's an entertainingly bad movie, <laughs> which there's a bunch of those out there. Um... Ernest in Africa, it's an okay two-star film, about on the same level, almost on the almost on the same level as Ernest Goes to Jail, not quite there, uh, but it's all it's pretty much an okay movie. Um, Ernest in the Army, now on to this one. <sighs> Ernest in the Army. I'd give Ernest and Army a one and a half stars. I don't really, really like this movie at all. This film is a is a is much weaker. is 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 weaker to me than Ernest Goes to Africa. I don't really like this film. You got uh, Jim Barney basically is Ernest again. Once again, he does great. He does fine as Ernest. But once again, the Ernest character and the the jokes that uh, they've been repeating through all these films that they're doing again here have just gotten so old. It's just like begging to come up with new material. You're just begging for them to come up with new material by now. Um, just the you know the whole ooh thing that Ernest does all the time. After five or six times, it's just not it's not as good. And after nine movies, <laughs> it's just kind of worn out its welcome. Even though Jim Varney still does it good, and I still like Jim Varney, but it just doesn't hold up as well here. But uh, Ernest is friends with this guy named Ben. Who's Ben? How the fuck do I know? But apparently they've been friends since they were kids. It would have been neat, and I would have awarded this movie at least two stars if they would have made this character Vern and finally showed us what Vern actually looks like. I would have loved that. But no, he's just some random guy named Ben who was friends with Ernest when Ernest was a kid. And I'm like, who the fuck is Ben? But anyway, so uh, Ernest is like friends with this guy named Ben who's in the military. One thing I do like is Ernest actually mention, mentions that he was a camp counselor. Uh, he tells Ben that, you know, that he was a summer camp counselor. Ernest actually says that, which I think is funny. It's nice to have a little bit of con uh, continuity in between these films. I like that uh, because none of them really reference each other at all. But, uh, so Ernest wants to try out for the army, he wants to enlist, but he figures he'll never go to actual combat, and, uh, I don't think the film takes full advantage of, uh, its setup here. Having Ernest in the army could be a lot funnier to me. Uh, it would be hilarious to see Ernest in boot camp. I, I, in my opinion, that would be hilarious. And then the bad guy, like this, uh, terrorist guy, he wants to be president, but every time he says he wants to be president, he goes, I want to be president for life, or I am president for life. 
I think that's hilarious. And the guy's name is uh, Too Fruity. <laughs> it's the guy's the direst name, so it's not exactly a character that's going to strike terror in the hearts of human beings everywhere or anything. And you got this army guy, uh, army sergeant, this general, and uh, his buddy, uh, who's like his uh, advisor on stuff. The two guys, the army general is like, uh, I believe is the, well, the two guys, I believe, are the same two guys from Ernest Rides Again, uh, who played like the, the mighty work boy salesman guys. I believe it's them, the same two guys. Uh, of course, they're older here. Uh, the bigger one uh, out of the two guys from Ernest Rides Again, uh, he's the Army General. And uh, the littler guy, he is the uh, advisor to the general. Uh, these two guys, they were funny. I enjoyed these two. But at the uh, end, the, 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 the littler guy keeps giving the Army General advice about shit and everything. I believe, yeah, the character's name is Barnes. And he keeps giving the general advice about everything. Uh, it's... <laughs> It's pretty funny because, uh, like, uh, when he, like when a general has to like uh, ball somebody out, uh, Barnes he'll be like he'll be, he'll be talking to Barnes and he'll say how tough should I be Barnes and he's like and Barnes is like like an iron fist sir but in a soft glove I thought that was I like that that kind of shit's hilarious to me um, a little army they poke fun at the army a little bit in this film and I kind of enjoyed that part in my opinion they don't do it enough they don't push it far enough but um. So you got Ernest, and then like this new guy, this new guy is like uh, from another country. Uh, the uh, the general thinks he's French, and he keeps calling him Pierre, which I thought was funny. Um, so he like becomes the head of everything. Um, and he's like, he's and Ernest of course keeps fucking everything up. Ernest, you get some stupid shit comedy with Ernest, the character of Ernest, where he chews on all these ooey gooey gumdrops or whatever, and spits them on the French guy's face or whatever, and it all gets stuck to his face like a giant mask of candy or whatever and i'm like oh come on man and ernest tries to pry it off his face and he can't get the candy off because it's like a big you know giant mask of candy and uh he like ties the end of it uh he like pulls part of it like straight out like that of the the gum can the gummy candy um he ties it to like a, a fucking truck or whatever and it actually pulls the truck and the truck goes forward and uh hits the guy and runs him over and rips the candy stuff off his face, and I'm like, come on, man, by now, movie 10, I mean, good lord, this shit right here is just, like, desperate, it's like they've used up all the best material they had for the other earlier films, and by now, they're just grasping at straws, not being able to figure out what to do with the Ernest character anymore, it's like they can't write anything clever for him anymore, but, uh, so, the, uh, ben gets stressed out from the incident, which I'm trying to figure this out here. So Ernest did that, got the candy stuff stuck to the guy's face, the French guy. So the general calls him in, and that's when you get the scene where he's talking to Barnes about how tough he should be on him. And Ben is there with Ernest. Now, why is Ben there? Ben didn't do shit. Why is Ben there? Just because Ben's there to stick up for his buddy? And if that's the case, <laughs> then when Ben and Ernest go into the guy's office, why does the uh, general want to dismiss both of them? And throw them both out of the army. I mean, why? The Ben didn't do shit. What was the deal? Uh, but one thing I find funny is it stresses a, uh, it stresses a uh, Ben out so much they actually has a heart attack and passes out. And then uh, <laughs> the general's like uh, talking to Barnes and he's like, uh, I, he t uh, he says something like, I told you Barnes I was being too tough. Let's get out of here. And they Barnes and the general take off running and the general is talking to Barnes and he goes, I was never here. <laughs> I thought that was funny. These two guys. Uh, they 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 make me laugh. I enjoy these two guys, uh, Barnes and the General. Uh, and then you got Ernest getting ready to give uh, Ben CPR, and he goes, uh, "I learned CPR by watching Oprah." <laughs> I thought that was funny. It's a dated joke, but it's still funny. I got a little bit of charm out of it. Uh, and then when uh, Ben is in the hospital, uh, Ernest walks in. Ernest actually pulls out his IV, and you get a really funny scene where Ernest like tries to get his IV back in him. He grabs it, and starts like jabbing the fucking shit out of him. Trying to get his IV back into him. I thought that was mildly funny. I got a laugh out of that. I'll admit, I laughed at that. But then you get stupid shit jokes where, like, Ernest... Every time Ernest does something, like, any time he looks at something, he accidentally runs into it. Like, Ernest is trying... Like, Ernest runs directly into a door that's got this prisoner uh, that's being held by Tafuti. You know, and Ernest tries to rescue him, and Ernest gets the door open, and then the guy opens up the door and hits the door against Ernest's face. And then the, uh, the girl who's there with him, she's like a reporter, a member of the press or whatever. Yeah, she's a reporter. And uh, she grabs Ernest's arm to, to um, hurry him up so they can get out of there and pulls him directly right back into the door. It'd be like basically if I had a joke set up like this. I got some water. Okay, I'm like looking at the water. 
And I'm like, oh, I tripped. Oh, so sorry, I fell and hit the water. Set the water down. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess I need to get up. I just got a drink, a drink of water. I got to go piss. And I slip again and fall directly back down and hit the water. And then fall back down. And the water falls off the table. The water bottle actually falls off the table after I hit the ground and hits me in the head again. And just to, to drive the joke home three times in a row. I'm like, I'm tired of this pratfall shit. You know, fuck it. Come up with something new here, people. Okay, please. But, uh, anyway, Jim Varney, once again, he's still charming, F and A. I love Jim Varney. He's still good here. He's just not given much to do. The writing for his character and the jokes and stuff just fall almost completely flat. There's not enough for the guy to do here. He's just not given enough. Jim Varney is a good actor. He is a good comedian. He can do this. Lockable, charming character of Ernest. But he still needs good writing, and you're not getting it here. But, uh, or at least not intelligent writing. I understand Ernest is a lighthearted character, and he's going to have lighthearted material and lighthearted style jokes. But still, it has to be charming lighthearted, uh, funny lighthearted. It has to be interesting lightheartedness, and you're not getting that here, movie. You're just not. <laughs> but anyway, let's jump straight back into the film here. Um, and Ernest's got a crush on this uh, reporter girl who coincidentally shows up there uh, because she gets a tip off by the guy Barnes, who I guess has the hots for her, uh, and he tells her, like, what's going on and everything, and about, with like, what they're doing with Tafuti and the, the Pierre French guy or whatever, my leg was itching, <laughs> but, um, he tells them that they're gonna, like, head over there and shit to the Middle East or whatever, uh, and, of course, what a coincidence, he, he just happens to tell her at this specific time that Ernest is in the military, uh, I hate coincidental shit in movies. I can't stand it. Um, so they head. So she heads over there. She teams up with the stupid ass French guy. One thing I do find funny is when she first gets to the. One thing I hate is how she gets uh, infiltrates the army. Is she somehow just magically infiltrates it and disguises herself as a, a soldier and hitches a ride with the rest of the infantry along with Pierre over like over to the Middle East. And I'm like, how the fuck did she infiltrate the army and disguise herself as a sol as a soldier? that not explained whatsoever, so I'm like, at this point, fuck you, movie. If you're too lazy and you can't, even, not even bright enough to be able to come up with a reason for how she's able to get there, then I'm already losing hope. But, um, because it's just sorriness. It's sorriness. But, uh, anyway, or it's just not intelligent enough. But, um, well, it's both. <laughs> so they head over to the Middle East. Of course, the... The reporter girl and the Pierre guy both get kidnapped, and you find out the Pierre guy was like fucking working with Tafuti, or Tafruti, whatever his name is, bubblegum flavor or whatever. But uh, you find out he was actually working with him, which not a surprise because the Pierre guy's an asshole, Tafruti is an asshole, two assholes working together. It's pretty easy to spot. If you've seen uh, a couple movies, you'll know in about 10 minutes that this guy. <laughs> Once they get captured, you know in about 10 minutes that this guy is obviously working with the enemy. But uh, for some reason, this guy, Pierre guy, is so stupid, he actually thought that Tafruti was going to pay him money if he delivered him a member of the press and fucking uh, a, a missile. And I'm like, wow, you're so intelligent there, Pierre. <laughs> so, of course, he says, fuck you, Pierre. He ties Pierre to the missile. And I'm like, why does Tafruti or Tafruti want a member of the press. He doesn't do shit with the member of the press. She's absolutely useless. She does nothing. But, uh, of course, Ernest, you get a kind of a humorous scene, though. Uh, oh, yeah, like I was saying, like I was trying to say a while ago, when she first gets to the uh, the camp with the soldiers, she has all her stuff there, uh, and nobody won't help her lift it, and Ernest gets ready to help the reporter uh, lift carrier bags or whatever. And uh, she, uh, she says something to Ernest, like, you must be something or another, and he goes, no, I'm Southern, I'm actually, he goes, no, I'm Southern Baptist, or whatever, <laughs> I thought that was funny, that was funny, uh, I can't remember exactly how it all went, but it was mildly funny, it's because I'm blocking part of this movie out, the shittier the movie is, the less I pay attention, I'll be honest, but, uh, it was still mildly amusing, that scene was, anyway, and you got this other <laughs> goofy scene where Ernest makes these pancakes, and he puts, like, some kind of tank fixture stuff, or whatever stuff to use to fix uh, parts of a tank or something like that in the the mix with the pancakes and they come out like so fucking heavy that when the guy's in line to get him uh, one of the army guys is in line to get him a pancake Ernest lifts it up with the spatula and the fucking pancake 
like causes the spatula to bend down. I thought that was hilarious. Causes the end of the spatula to bend down. I thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, other than that stuff, there's really not much more interest, much more interesting stuff here. Ernest B. Friends, this little boy, um, because he saves him from uh, getting, because the kid's like getting beat up on by much other kids, and Ernest saves him, and he becomes Ernest's friend. The kid tells Ernest about how his, how his mom's dead and everything, how his mom was killed by Tafudi, and I'm like, damn, that's kind of hardcore for an Ernest movie. Once again, it's a little bit too adult for an Ernest film, but at the same time, I'm awarding the director, I'm awarding John Cherry a little bit of credit here, because. At least he had the balls to kind of at least play up how horrible things are over in the Middle East. So I thank him for that. But um, but anyway, so Ernest befriends the little boy, and you get the little boy's dad is like held prisoner by Tafudi, um, and he like keeps talking about gives it like this really over the top, really corny, dramatic, overly dramatic voiceover about everything that's happening in the movie. Somehow this character knows everything that's happening in the movie. I don't know. He keeps talking about some great American hero who, of course, is Ernest. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's got a little bit of charm to it, but it's so so overly serious that I couldn't really get into it. Feels a little bit out of place in this film. Um, but um, but anyway, and then of course, uh, once you get to the end, Ernest decides to go save the reporter girl and Pierre. Ernest breaks her out, and you get kind of a funny scene here where they're underneath the tent. It's like fell down, and Ernest and the girl are trying to get out of there. And Ernest goes, uh, "Quick, raise your head up, because all the bad guys, like henchmen or whatever, are hitting the top of the, hitting their bodies or whatever, where they're raised up." And he goes, "Quick, let's raise up." And she raises up, and he bends down, and she's like, "She's like Ernest." <laughs> I thought that was funny, like he's getting her to raise up so she'll get hit, and he won't. Uh, I thought that was funny. I like that. Um, you got this one scene where Ernest gets electrocuted on an electric fence, and I'm like, he like, I'm like, this is a missed opportunity because I would have liked it. It would have been cool. If Ernest would have gotten his electric powers back, his magnetism powers. That would have been cool. But I guess they probably didn't have the budget for that kind of stuff here in this one. But that would have been cool. Um, like I said, more stupid shit kind of comedy, like where Ernest leaves like a big cartoon cutout imprint of himself inside the electric fence, and he walks through it, and he's like all the way through it. And he's like, yeah. And he like leans back like that because he's like, you know, showing off. He leans back and actually hits it like that. And I'm like, and then he falls down again. And I'm like, oh, movie, please. This is like two-year-old level shit here. But anyway. And then, of course, he, uh, him and the reporter girl get away. Uh, they save the general eventually. Um, they get out of there. Well, they save Pierre. I mean, Pierre. They get Pierre out of there. He's still strapped to the missile. Tafruti comes after him. By now, the little boy is teamed up with him. He showed up there at the camp, and uh, he's teamed up with Ernest. Um, and so Ernest and the little boy and the reporter are getting the fuck out of there. And Ernest, uh, they get trapped in front of this, uh, these rock mines, and Ernest has to get like out on the front of the vehicle. He uses his scooper thing to pick up the mines and flip them behind the truck and throw them at the enemy. Um, that's kind of a neat idea. And it's kind of makes a, makes for a a little bit of okay action, I guess. Uh, passable action, anyway. Um, so Ernest does that kind of stuff. Um, well, he flips the rock mines at Tofruti, which is mildly interesting. And then, of course, uh, Tofruti's the only one left. And uh, Ernest is like, ha they have to stop, and Ernest is like right in front of him. And Tofruti gets ready to shoot him, and Ernest uses the pancake that he put in his pocket earlier. Which, obviously, you know the moment he puts it in his pocket, you're like, wow, I wonder if this pancake is going to pay off later. I mean... Uh, but uh, of course, at the end of it, he uses the pancake, hits Tafudi in the head, and Tafudi just falls down. Um, and then uh, the guy who's with Tafudi goes, uh, "I think you're damaged, sir, for life." <laughs> and uh, I'm like, "Okay." That's mildly funny because he keeps wanting to be called President for Life, or, or <laughs> that's mildly funny. But at the same time, and then the guy just turns around with Tafudi and just drives away after Tafudi just got hit in the head. I'm like, why does he do that? Why do they just drive away? They could have just, they, they're in like a vehicle with a gun attached to the top of it. Why just drive away? They could just blow the shit out of Ernest and the reporter girl right there and the kid and just took the missile and just called it a day. I don't get that. I do not get that at all. The henchman guy who's with Tafuti could have done it and they could have just left. It's a cop out ending. It's just like, we need to hurry up, get this shit over with and get out of here. Because it's an army type themed Ernest film, and this guy Tafudi is a terrorist, so 
they're trying to work around not having to kill him, so instead he just gets knocked out with a pancake, and they just drive away, even though they could have easily killed Ernest and everybody right there, and I'm like, come on, man, that's so lame. And then, and then of course, the general guy, uh, he find out he's working with some, like, con some dude who keeps petting on a cat. He's supposed to, he kind of reminds me of a fucking Inspector Gadget, Dr. Claw. Uh, I'll get you next time, Gadget. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that kind of shit. And I'm like, what is it? Who, who the fuck is this guy he's working with? What is this even about? I don't even get that. It never explains it, so I'm like, falls under, you know, the who who gives a shit list. You see, you got a list of who gives a shit stuff when you make a movie or when you watch a film. You put certain stuff down in that list. And See, this falls directly at the bottom under who gives a shit. But anyway, and then, uh, fucking, uh, the kid bites the, he's holding the little boy hostage, Pierre is, and the little boy bites the Pierre's hand and gets away, um, and then Ernest hits, uh, the launcher thing for the missile, and it takes off flying with Pierre, but for some reason the missile doesn't explode, it just goes directly into the sand, and I'm like, okay, well, anyway, why didn't it just, the missile just fly off, I don't get it, but whatever, <laughs> It could remind. It could have been like the ending of uh, True Lies when Schwarzenegger's got that terrorist guy on the end of the fucking missile. Yeah, Ernest should have said, "You're fired." <laughs> I would have loved that. That would have automatically have cranked it up to two stars. But uh, no, it just like lands in the dirt, and he's just like face first down and lands in the sand, and Pierre's face first down in the sand, and I'm like with his legs sticking up there, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <sighs> And then the general and Barnes show up, and gen and uh, and uh, the general's like, "I'm gonna pin a lot of medals on you, son." And uh, and Arno he goes, "I'm gonna pin some medals on you, son, or so or a lot of medals on you, son." And Barnes is like, "Be careful what you promise, now, general." And then the general goes, "You're fired, Barnes." And I'm like, "Why? He's listened to Barnes the entire fucking movie. Why is he firing him now? I don't get that. But whatever, <laughs> um, whatever." And then. And then you get, Ernest finally gets to kiss the girl because she's so happy that he's actually saved her. Uh, Ernest finally gets to kiss the girl. The girl kisses him, really, and she kisses him. And all through the movie, Ernest has been saying that his lips chap easy. And when she kisses him, she pulls back and her, his chap lips are stuck to her lips. And I thought that was mildly amusing. That was, that was kind of funny. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much a one and a half star film, but... I'll give it two stars. I'll go ahead and be kind. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it two stars. I'll, I'll keep it at two stars. Because the ending here, uh, that little lip thing is kind of funny. But the next little scene here that I kind of forgot about, uh, this little ending here, I really I like this little cutesy ending. Uh, it pretty much goes off there, and you got the little boy that Ernest saves, and you get a voiceover that says that uh, uh, this guy, this boy grows up to be a good, uh, a, a good leader in this place or whatever or something like that. And uh, it says, like, every, around every corner, there's written on stuff, uh, stick by your buddy, know what I mean. Uh, I kind of like that. That was that was a sweet little tribute thing. Uh, felt like a sweet little, you know, a sweet little comment, you know, for this being the last Ernest film and Jim Varney dying after this film, or not too soon after. Um, or around the time it was completed, even, maybe. That just felt kind of like a little sweet thing. After watching 10 of these films, I'm glad they go out on a little, you know, cute little sweet nod like that. Because I really do love Jim Barney. Um, and I love the Ernest character. So I like that. So I'll give the film just a passable two stars. Yeah, it's a passable two star film. Um, it's, it's the second weakest film in the franchise I've seen so far. It's pretty much on the same level as Ernest Goes to School just barely scrapes by by the skin of its teeth. It's pretty much on that same level. Um, so it's just a, a passable two stars. Just barely squeezes by. Do I recommend watching this film? No. But if you've seen all the other ones, though, the first nine, I would say go ahead and watch this one. If you're just like a moviegoer uh, who just wants to watch something, just to watch it or watch something entertaining or good or whatever, there's plenty of better earnest films than this one. So I'd just give this film just a passable, low-level two stars just because I like the ending, how it goes out on a really sweet note. Uh, I love Jim Varney. Um... I really think the Ernest franchise should end here. I really don't know if we need another Ernest film. I've heard talks about people wanting to do a Son of Ernest movie. I don't really know how you can do that. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, you could you could try to get like a lookalike actor or something maybe. But uh, I'm not sure if that would work. I, 
it would take somebody really good to recreate this charm of Ernest. I mean, somebody really good to recreate the charm of Ernest. I don't really know if you could do that at all. Uh, I mean, but I've been fooled before. I mean, you never know. But why, why risk it? I mean, why risk it is what I'm saying. Because it usually would just, just ends up in fear uh, as a film. But uh, I would rather him do a Son of Ernest movie, to be honest, than a reboot with a whole new guy playing Ernest. Or just another sequel with a lookalike actor playing Ernest. I would rather it be a Son of Ernest movie out of those choices. But, um, well, my last Ernest film. Um, I'll see you guys again with the start of the Leprechaun series. I'm getting back into horror. Uh, I'll be hitting it off with Leprechaun 1. I haven't seen these films in forever, so I don't have any idea how good or bad they are. I know there's a Leprechaun remake coming out. Uh, I can't believe that. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the next video will be Leprechaun 1. And just to round off the Ernest series, Dr. Otto and Real of the Gloom Beam. I liked it. Good movie. Um, Ernest Goes to Camp, uh, just an alright movie. Nothing amazing or special, but an alright little time killer. Um, Ernest Saves Christmas, a really good movie. I'd give That's a four-star film for me. I really enjoyed Ernest Saves Christmas. Very charming film. Um, Ernest Goes to Jail, just an okay movie. Nothing amazing, but an okay time waster. Um, Ernest Scared Stupid, two and a half, a decent movie. A fun little Halloween treat. I recommend that one. Definitely. That's a fun little Halloween treat movie. Definitely a fun to watch on Halloween. Um, and just the idea of Ernest battling a troll was hilarious. Um, Ernest Rides Again. Uh, one of my favorites. Either my favorite or my second favorite. I don't know between that one and Ernest Saves Christmas. But uh, a really wonderful one Ernest Rides Again is. I love like just the whole buddy, uh, the whole uh, bromance of the movie, the whole buddy thing with Ernest and uh, the Dr. Abner Mellon. <laughs> Ernest goes to school, just barely scrapes by by the skin of its teeth. Just a low-level passable film. Um, not worth watching, really, unless you've watched the other ones. Uh, only if you're a fan. Ernest, um, Ernest goes to Africa. Or no, Slam Dunk Ernest. Slam Dunk Ernest is just a one-star film. A bad movie. Uh, not worth watching unless you've watched the other ones. Um, but it's still an entertaining bad movie. It's an entertaining bad movie. Um... Ernest Goes to Africa, um, an okay movie, almost on the same level of Ernest Goes to Jail, an okay one. I had an okay time with that one. I'd recommend watching that one if you're if you're wanting to watch just a little uh, a little okay time waster type movie. Um, Ernest and Army, don't bother, don't bother. It's a don't bother. I wouldn't bother watching this one once again. It's one of those ones unless you've seen the previous Ernest films up until now. Don't bother watching it. There's plenty of better Ernest films. And if you have watched the other ones up until now, at least it goes out on a really sweet note uh, with the final voiceover. Um, I'd recommend just watching it if you're an Ernest fan and you've watched the other ones just for, just to make it to the end and hear that sweet little final voiceover. I really like that. Jim Varney, I love you, man. I miss you. Um, and um, I'll see you guys again with the first review of the Leprechaun series. I miss you, Jim. I love you, buddy.